the slide deck is getting up. Again, my name is Tanya Bulet, Counseling Coordinator for San Diego Office of Ed. And welcome to our final presentation webinar uh, with our San Diego Community Colleges today. And today I have the honor to uh, introduce Roy Hernandez, who is a counselor at the San Diego College of Continuing Ed. I also have Marquise Glover, or Glover. Marquise, is it Glover or Glover? Glover. Glover, okay. Uh, who is our student services assistant. So I'm gonna hand it off to them. They do have a raffle prize for one lucky person at the end. So please stay on. And just uh, as, as I've mentioned in the other webinars, this is being recorded and we will also have a copy of their slide deck um, added to our resource page on the San Diego School Counselor website, uh, probably up next Monday. So thank you again for joining us. I'm gonna pass it off to them. Well, thank you very much. Um, I only have uh, 30 minutes and there's a lot of information I wanted to share. Um, the outreach coordinator that would normally be doing this has moved on to uh, New Horizons and uh, I'm happy to have volunteered. I only had a few days to prepare, so hopefully I'm gonna present some good information for you. I actually trained that uh, outreach coordinator so to show you how long I've been in this district. Um, Quickly, my quick back, my background, I've been in the district, uh, San Diego Community College District uh, since 91. So this is my 30th year. So I should have learned a few things along the way, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do is quickly just go through the agenda here and I'm gonna move qu pretty quickly. But the good news is at the end, I'll present my contact information and to make it as simple as possible, uh, you have further questions or, uh, not sure about some things, you can email me and I can answer those questions and also refer you to the appropriate person uh, for your question if I can't answer it. Okay, so uh, the agenda. So I really think it's important that I talk to you really quickly about the differences between credit and non-credit. I'm gonna do that. Um, next, you see that I'll be highlighting the vocation, vocational programs uh, because that's what you're here to hear about today. I, uh, we have a lot more beyond just vocational, but that's where the focus is going to be today. I'm going to be talking about the college credit option available uh, that some of you may or may not be aware of. And good. Okay. I just want to make sure everyone's hearing me. Looks like everyone interrupt me if uh, you can't see and hear me. Okay. Where was I? Oh, we're going to just uh, tell you a little bit about the Gateway program, uh, an exciting program that we offer at the uh, College of Continuing Education. Uh, a little bit about our SDCE Promise Scholarship. Uh, you may have heard about Promise already through the colleges, but ours is a little different. I'll explain that. I also want to quickly hit on the minor waiver uh, because we do get 17 year olds. And I want to quickly explain that process if you have any uh, prospective students who, who are 17. And then basic steps to enroll uh, into a course. It can be a, a maze to get through that process. And I'll explain as much as I can about it and my advice on how to get through that. And then uh, some questions hopefully at the end if there's time. And of course we will do this with the swag. And uh, so that's what we're looking to cover. So let's move on so I can get this to respond. Ah, so you should see a map of um, city of San Diego and our district. Again, our district is the San Diego Community College District. You've heard of from our three colleges, um, City College, the oldest college in San, in San Diego, um, Mesa College. It opened uh, the year I was born, so don't ask me how old I am. And uh, Miramar College, we call it the, the youngest, which opened in the early 70s. And our uh, San Diego College of Continuing Education campuses we are at seven now, and I'm happy to say that we own all our sites. And so that's a big, uh, a, a big change from the past. So we have our own uh, campuses. The newest uh, is, oops, my pointer is doing a little something there. Let me go back. The newest is our uh, CE at Miramar College, which is listed at the top. So we actually have CE located on the Miramar College campus. Students there can actually be going to college and taking our continuing education courses. And at the bottom is the Educational Cultural Complex, um, which is our main headquarters where I work out of. 
And you'll see those are the two furthest north and furthest south. And so we are in the city of San Diego, although students can come from anywhere to take our classes, as long as you are in California or have an address right, of Cal in California. Okay, let's move on. So what are some of the important differences between credit and non-credit? Again, let me apologize. My, my cursor is really sensitive. Okay, so I, I need to go through this really quick. Credit, college, right? The two-year colleges, non-credit is, is us. The uh, biggest difference is uh, you have uh, community colleges require tuition and fees and non-credit, uh, San Diego College of Continuing Education in particular is tuition free, okay? So tuition, there is none, all right? Uh, if we're talking about some cost to the courses, there are some material fees, some equipment, uh, uniforms, depending on, on the program. And that would be like the culinary chef training. They require the chef's coat. Uh, the nursing uh, assistant program that I'll highlight in a second requires the, uh, the uh, what do you call those? I'm not gonna say fatigues, it's um, the scrubs, things like that. Uh, but there's also a lot of assistance in some of the programs uh, for uh, continuing College of Continuing Ed that actually helps them with materials um, and loaners. So it, there's no reason a student uh, should not take a course or jump into a program thinking that they can't afford it. All right, so uh, for credit community college students uh, wanting fin uh, financial aid usually have to have a high school diploma or equivalency uh, to be able to apply for financial aid at the college level. That is a non-issue for our students because uh, we do not require high school diploma or high school equivalency just to even to take, take any of our training courses. Uh, although we do offer high school diploma and high school equivalency, they can earn it with us while they're with us. We don't require it. You basically just have to be 18 and older. And that's why I'm going to mention a little bit about 17 year olds in a little bit. Now, assessment is also something that the colleges requires. Assessment, placement, testing uh, is required you know, for the advisories and the pre prerequisites in the courses. <clears throat> in our, uh, our side of the house, non-credit, only the automotive technology and certified nursing assistant programs um, have some sort of assessment placement testing that they do, which is very different from the colleges. It's just something that helps uh, place the students in the appropriate uh, coursework towards these certificates. But all other certificates and programs do not require any uh, assessment to get into vocational training. Okay, let's move on. So really quickly, I put together the uh, programs that we offer in vocational training with some notes. I try to put uh, very specific, specific information to help you. Um, by the way, if you have your phone, take pictures of these slides as we go, feel free to do that. And I'm also gonna provide this uh, to um, your coordinator of, of this event so that they can distribute it to you later. And of course, please contact me if you have further questions. So uh, A to Z, uh, starting with automotive, you notice it says ECC. And if you see, in, see it in bold, ECC is in bold because bold will mean to you that that's also the um, headquartered campus where the, where the program is headquartered because some programs are offered at several sites. Automotive is only offered at ECC. And if you see that little blue asterisk um, next to a automotive technician, that you can see at the bottom indicates that there's college credit um, option available. And I'll explain that in a little bit. You'll see that um, throughout this uh, slide, there's several certificates that offer that option. And I'll explain it again in a little bit. So you see automotive technician has four certificates right there. I don't want to go into too much detail there because there's so much to cover. Uh, just know that we have automotive, which is working on the engine, that kind of thing. Auto body repair and paint, the outside of the car, right? The dents and all that. We have two certificates there. We also have upholstery, which is made up of three certificates. So I always like to say we cover the whole car, okay? Uh, and we, we train for the whole car. Uh, business and accounting is important to note because that's office training. A lot of people come to us to, to improve their skills, to be able to get into some office uh, jobs. 
And you'll notice that there's one, two, three, four, five campuses listed. These are our main campuses. And so it's offered at all, pretty much all our campuses. Uh, business information worker is the basic beginning level training. Uh, there's three modules there that a student can, can earn towards getting ready for work. We also have a count clerk, which is very specific accounting training. An administrative assistant, which is, I like to say is the highest level, uh, advanced level, which allows someone to enter a job and get promoted, become an office manager. So I always push my students to that. Uh, why not do them all? Because the more you have on your resume, the more likely you can get a job, right? Uh, child development. <clears throat> You'll notice that ECC is the only campus listed at this point, but at any time we can have them at several campuses. There's eight certificates there, and some of those also offer college credit. Uh, <clears throat> let's move on to the cl clothing and textiles. It used to be called fashion, now it's clothing and textiles. And two of those certificates offer college credit at the Mesa College Fashion, uh, through the Mesa College Fashion Program. Um, and then we have a new one coming on board called Fashion Retail Business, uh, made up of three courses. Moving down the line, uh, we have digital media, and that's headquartered at North City. Here you have uh, seven to eight courses required for the di digital design certificate itself. A front end web, front end web developer made up of four courses. Mobile application development made up of three courses. Programming and Python, I mean with Python, made up of three courses. And sprinkled in there are uh, college credit opportunities. Um, moving quickly, I apologize for how fast I have to go, but I have to keep moving to try to get you all this information. Uh, healthcare. Under healthcare, <clears throat> we have our, uh, that's our CC is our Cesar Chavez campus, and you notice it's headquartered there because it's highlighted. Uh, nursing assistant make, uh, is a 16-week program. Nursing assistant rehab, rehabilitative, which is a 20-week program. Nursing assistant acute care, which is, you'll notice the range from 19 to 38. And if you have specific questions about that, I could refer you to the counselor for that program so he can explain this 19 to 38 weeks. I'm, I'm not working with that program, so I'm guessing it's because there, uh, there's an opportunity there for students with the work experience to shorten it. And also sometimes there's students really working on more than one certificate. So that times it, it can affect the time frame, but I would refer you to him for more specific uh, answers. Home health aid is only a two to four week uh, certificate right there. Personal care assistant slash caregiver, which is another uh, program that's only 10 weeks. And then behavior, behavioral, can't even say the word, behavioral health aid, which is a 15 to 21 week uh, program certificate. Moving down. Oh, and of course, uh, so college credit is available in there, in somewhere in there. Hospitality and Culinary Arts is our new title for this. And also, by the way, all these titles, if you go to the website, they're listed under these same titles, okay? So if that, that's not always the case. So I made sure to check the website so that you're going to be seeing the same thing if you go to our website. So uh, Hospitality and Culinary Arts. So Introduction to Hospitality Industry is a requirement is not required, but it's highly recommended because it preps students uh, for these certificates and it also gets them their food handlers license at the same time, which is, is required to get into field. Uh, culinary arts, which offers college credit at our uh, Mesa College uh, is really chef training, sous chef training, 36 weeks of work and they also offer the Culinary Arts Advance, which is eight or only, only eight weeks, but I wanna emphasize you have to do Culinary Arts to be allowed to do the Advanced, okay? Because you have to be prepared to be able to handle those uh, intense eight weeks, which is usually in the summer session at the end of finishing uh, the chef training throughout, through the regular year. Now, coming on board are baking, which used to be called advanced and professional, that's going away. And we are now um, have two newer up-to-date programs 
uh, certificates. They're called uh, Baking and Pastry Arts One, made up of two courses, starting this November, by the way. I, I work with that program. And uh, Baking and Pastry Arts Two, which should kick in in the spring. And now we'll have programs that kind of automatically move a student through uh, where that wasn't the case before in baking. So baking's gotten a little more uh, manageable for a student to flow through that program, so those program certificates. Uh, coming on board fall of 2022, uh, culinary nutrition certificate and hospitality and, and event management. Uh, these are uh, having to be vetted through the state and that process can take a while. So uh, even though I say fall 22, I'm giving you a, a long estimate because I'm hoping that it is available. Um, if it isn't, it would be because the process is taking longer than we'd like. Okay, moving on to skilled and technical trades. ECC, you'll see is the headquartered campus, although we have Mid-City and North City listed. Most of these courses are at ECC, uh, except for the first one you see, the electronic technician, which is made up of two courses, 36 weeks, a very intense um, training course. We pretty much has a student there uh, four days a week. Uh, that's our, at our mid-city campus. All the other programs uh, listed below that are uh, through ECC. And on occasion, our plumbing courses are offered through North City. But keeping it simple, you work with me because I'm working with those programs and um, I can give you updated information as it changes. You'll notice the heating and air conditioning and HVAC, which is made up of two courses, is college credit. And what's unique about this particular certificate is those two courses, you do them in one semester. So in one semester, you, you do everything for HVAC and you can get college credit. Uh, next, you see the plumbing is made up of plumbing one, two, and three. So basically three courses, one per semester. So it takes about three semesters. And when I say semesters, I'm talking about full semesters, like a fall and spring, which are 16 to 18 weeks. Summer sessions are usually 10 weeks long. We tend to not offer plumbing in the summer because of the fact that it's such a short um, summer session. Moving on to welding, we have shielded metal arc available to students. It's a two course requirement, 600 hours, 24 weeks. The way to look at that is 24 weeks would approximately be a semester and a half to finish. Okay, all of these are the same as far as time-wise. The good news though, people move at their own space, pace, uh, in the space, uh, at their own pace to be finished. So even though 24 weeks may have passed, some students take longer, some students take less. Uh, pipe is, uh, again, two courses, 600 hours, 24 weeks. Gas tungsten art, two courses, 600 hours, 24 weeks. And then metal fabrication, uh, two courses, 600 hours, 24 weeks. And in the, the way that I put them in order is kind of the order that people tend to do it because some of these like gas tungsten and metal fabrication uh, are advanced levels, advanced level certificates that the instructors want the students to have earned others before to know that they're going to do well in those. Um, and obviously, I could talk more about these, but in order to get all the information I want to share, I'm going to move on. Sorry if I'm moving. Mr. Hernandez, we have yes. reached the 1120 mark. See? See what I mean? Okay. <laughs> moving even quicker. How does college credit option work? When a student signs up for a course that is eligible for that option, they get an automated email. So then they work with the teacher and all they need to do is make sure they maintain a B or better. So they work with the teacher and they have to uh, do well in the class and then finish the, the course with the instructor doing the grade. And uh, the student also has to um, register, which is free at any of the colleges so that the transcript will be accepted and you know, the credit will be accepted onto a transcript at the college level. Okay, so uh, I can't read what I have here. Let's see, San Diego Gateway to College and Career uh, Program Participation Requirements. Okay, Gateway, what makes Gateway different? It targets our students that are between 18 and 20 years old. Uh, you can be automatically uh, qualifying if you come from these zip codes, as you can see here. But you don't, if you're out of these zip codes, you can still qualify if you are between 18 and 24. I tell students, talk to them, and many times they can work with you and get you to 
There's other things listed in here, but at the bottom, I put a direct link so that you can open it and take a look at the eligibility. You can even click on there and send an email to get more information um, regarding the program. Let's move on. So much to cover. Promise scholarship program through SDCCE. Uh, our program is uh, different in that ours, ours is called scholarship for our students who are non-high school because we have high school students finish, you know, people finishing high school with us who are going to apply for the college programs. And so we target like our vocational students can apply for this promise scholarship and it has in general and they, and they can change 25 to 40 spaces per year. And it basically will cover the tuition for the community colleges, one of our community colleges for two years for our vocational or non high school students. And then um, it tells you, you know, some of the requirements there, but here is the direct contact is uh, the counselor. I mean, I'm sorry, the Dean of Career and College Transition, Stephanie Lewis. I added her email right there and uh, the website as well, if you want to uh, pursue that, uh, pursue more information there. Okay, minor waiver, why did I put this in here? Because I, I have several students who've gone through this process. They're 17, they finished high school early, they wanna come onto campus. Well, because they're not 18, generally we just say no. So there is a process. Uh, you work with the counselor, uh, so you can contact me. I can refer you to the counselor for that program and the dean for that program to for them to be aware that you have someone that might qualify. Uh, so I've done it several times already. And so you can start with me. Uh, be aware it can take up to 30 days to complete that process. So the sooner you can start the student, the better. Moving on, basic steps to enrollment. This is important because uh, you, a student, in order to, to enroll, you got to create your portal, you gotta get a, a college student identification number. Uh, and here's the website or a direct on our, on our webpage where you can start that process. And if you wanna know the process, I invite you to do it yourself because by doing it, you'll see the process. Uh, anyone can, can, in, uh, can do this for free and get a number issued even if you're not gonna enroll. But you need to do that to be able to proceed. So, and then you sign up for your program of choice via the website and explain here how to do it. But basically you open it, you click on it, follow the prompts and add yourself to what's called the contact list, which means I wanna be notified when there's an orientation. Now do it as soon as you can, because uh, you have to complete a program, uh, the program orientation process, and it varies by program. And they can be held throughout the year. They could be at the beginning of a semester. And if you miss that, you gotta wait till next semester, or there might be another one coming depending on the program. You need to find that out the sooner the better. So I always say contact the program counselor for current process. So I put here, email me for assistance because counselors can change. Counselors can go on maternity or paternity and someone else is doing it and you're just lost trying to find a counselor. So the easiest thing is you can email me and I can um, get you to that counselor and also get you to Maureen if it's something that, that de um, my, our dean of um, student equity uh, needs to to take care of. So uh, you enroll as directed. Uh, another thing is uh, enrollment happens in different different um, ways, individual permission codes, open enrollment periods where someone can self enroll uh, or in class, which was prior to COVID. And we hope to be back with that process come spring, which is at the end of January, 2022. We'll be uh, getting ready for the spring and we're hoping to open up and have all these options. Keep in mind the options can be 100% online courses still, hybrid courses, high flex, which means you get to pick the days in class and the days uh, online, um, which one's that? and fully 100% on campus. We're gonna have hopefully uh, that type of variety of choices come spring. And I need to get to some of these questions. While I, I've just posted my contact information, Please take a, take a look at it, take a picture of it. Uh, there's my email, which is probably the most important thing there. There's uh, my Google number, uh, our ECC Student Services direct email for questions that, don't, that counselors don't handle. That's like my password. I, for, I don't know how to get into my portal. I have a hold, things like that. You would want to contact them. But if you contact me, I can refer you. And then the number, 
we do have office hours, slowly opening offices. So you can call this number. And if you don't get a person, you can leave a message and they will get back to you. And then my basic schedule, look at this as when I can uh, reply and uh, to your emails and also I see students as doing appointments. I'm not doing any live appointments yet. And then lastly, these are the programs I work with. Some of these that you've heard mentioned, the clothing and textiles, digital media, uh, when it comes back to our campus, it's not at ECC right now. Hospitality and culinary, baking, culinary, hospitality, HVAC, office skills, and the plumbing uh, program are my specific programs. But don't, don't hesitate to contact me if you want to know about welding. I'll refer you to that counselor, and I'll probably answer a lot of the initial questions. Okay, so I'm going to leave this up. And um, where am I time-wise? So we do have um, a couple of minutes, but we do have a question. Um, can an adult student, 18 plus, be concurrently enrolled in an SDCE program and still complete high school at another San Diego County school site? We have lots of adult students yes. in our juvenile court and community school campuses. Uh, yes, yes, a uh, quick answer to that, yes. Great. Uh, just, just work. Uh, Work with me, I could refer you to the appropriate counselors to, to hand you, help you with that process. Jessica says, awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's always a good answer, yes. Uh, let's see, uh, any other questions? I see there's some names in here. Uh, any specific question for me that I can answer? Uh, this recording is We don't have any right now, but as um, okay. we have a raffle prize up, and Marquise, do you wanna show us uh, what you guys have? So we have a swag bag here, which contains multiple things. We have our new a sweater with our new logo, which is San Diego College of Continuing Education. Love yeah, it. So, um, since COVID has brought on stress, we have a little stress ball. Awesome. Mug. While you do that, can I answer a question? There is a question about yes. CTE classes being free. Can I explain really quickly? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, while that's being done. Uh, yes, we're free, but I just want to talk about this because I've gotten this in my experience. When people hear free, they tend to think it's not as good. Uh, it doesn't have quality to it because it's free. We have all the quality and it's as good as all the other programs you hear about, but why is it free? Well, look at it this way. We pay state taxes and the state taxes pay for these courses. So you have prepaid for these. So they're not free. You have already paid for that. So why not take advantage of it? And that's what I would ask you to tell your Students, so uh, they don't think this word free means it's less than. And that's just my con my own experience from, from working with students for so many years. Wonderful. Well, I mean, Marquise, I don't know if that bag is bottomless, but you just keep pulling out stuff. <laughs> <laughs> try to get as many things and items for students and prospective students. Props up, you guys have the best swag bag uh, we've had so far. And really? we've done, yeah, we've done nine awesome. of these. So, wow! Great, good, great job. So, Zaret, do you want to pick one lucky winner? And for that person, if you could just put your email into the chat so we know that you're still here, and then um, and then she will work on getting your mailing address, and then we will send it off to Roy and Marquise to get that swag off to you. So, Zaret, who is our winner? I have Lorraine Avendares. Lorraine, if you could. Put email into the chat uh, and then Zarette will be in touch with you to get your awesome. mailing address. And so I have to just say thank you both so much. I learned a lot about this program, which to be honest, I have been a counselor for over 20 years and I was not uh, fully aware of all of the things and the services that you provide for mm -hmm. students in this particular situation. So this is right. a program and um, we will make sure to get everything posted along with any resources you have on our website to get the word out because uh, there is a definite need for this in our community so yes. thank you so much thank you, thank you. you're excited. that's where I actually was going to go to that uh, a lot of uh, counselors out there even in our own district are not aware um, I became aware of this as I came on to the site because I've worked both sites so, um, yeah just ask questions uh, because we have a lot more that I even didn't even touch on We'll have to have you back for additional information. So 
thank you all for being here. Congratulations again, Lorraine. And um, we will, like I said, have all of this posted hopefully up by Monday. So be uh, ready for that. And thank you again for being here, part of the series. We'll have one more day on Friday with some of our other community colleges in San Diego. So have a thank wonderful you. afternoon and we'll hopefully see you on Friday. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks, Marquise.